Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And um, we have literally the abomination that is desolating everywhere now in the UN. And Harley, I want you to, I'm not going to steal your thunder, so please tell us the remarkable story of what transpired in the UN yesterday. Well, let me start with a, a news flash I just got. Uh, there's a report today that UN inspectors have been, chemical weapons inspectors, have been led back into Syria, and they're going to Aleppo where there was an allegation of a chemical weapons attack back in March. And at the time, the United Nations chemical weapons expert said that it appeared that the rebels had done it. Now, the fact that they're starting their investigation in Aleppo, and they have a 100-page Russian report which has evidence of the weapons that were used in the attack coming from Libya, weapons that Russia had provided Libya, uh, also, the Russians are saying that the casings that were found at the Damascus uh, attack, which, because it had Russian letters on the, the rockets, the Kerry and others say this is proof it was Assad, that the Russians have shown that those casings were f- actually from rockets provided to Libyans in the 1970s. Wow. And who has the Libyans' weapons? It's al-Qaeda. Right. So... Here we have the president yesterday standing up in front of the world saying there's no doubt that it was Assad who used the chemical weapons, when for most of the world there's a lot of doubt about it. Secondly, the president in front of the U.N. saying that while national sovereignty is important, we must not allow national sovereignty to be used as an excuse to stop necessary use of force against regimes that violate human rights. Now, what happens when there's no consensus on what that regime is that's violating human rights? For example, when the UN Security Council doesn't agree with the United States that a certain country is violating human rights, does the United States have for itself the right to go in and attack that country? And Obama said yesterday in the United Nations that the United States does have that right, that he as president has the right to make that determination. So he has thrown out the window all of the international law, all of the U.S. Uh, laws on military, use of military force, and appropriated to himself the sole authority as to when military force should be used. That's what happened at the U.N. yesterday. we got to change his title then. We can no longer refer to him as president. We have to refer to him as emperor. As the global... Decider. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. That sounds like uh, George Bush. Remember, he said, "I'm the decider." That yeah. was a joke back. Now, it, here's, it, it, here's the other flash that I just got on, uh, from a mm. report that you know the, the president last week waived the terrorist provision in the Arms Export Act because uh, he wanted to provide arms to the so-called rebels in Syria, and he didn't want anyone to hold back for fear that those arms might end up in the hands of terrorists from delivering the weapons, so he waived it. Now it turns out that precisely that fear is actually a reality. The statement, uh, here, here's the news story. More than a dozen key Syrian rebel groups <laughs> said Wednesday that they reject the authority of the western back opposition coalition. Uh, the 13 groups, including a powerful al-Qaeda-linked faction, in, and but including the so-called mainstream forces, uh, attacked the Syrian National Coalition, saying it no longer represents their interests. And they said that they are uniting under a clear Islamic framework based on Sharia law, which should be the sole source of legislation. Now, that is the grouping that's going to get arms from the CIA. The so-called moderates are now in absolute alliance with the al-Nusra front and the Iraqi-backed al-Qaeda for or the, I'm sorry, the Iraq al-Qaeda from Iraq. For. So, the, so the, uh, the moderates are people that are in the locked crazy ward, is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the real yeah. moderates are being shot and killed by the, the hard Right. Well, in fact, what's, what's going on is there's fights of towns. There's a document last week uh, near Turkey between these moderates and these other al-Nusra front characters who took over the towns. They're, in yep. other words, they're fighting each other and getting rid of the moderates and coming in and killing Christians and burning down churches and doing other horrors. And that's who the president said yesterday, we reserve the right to intervene in Syria 
in support of those terrorist forces supposedly to uphold international law. I, I call now, on the military. I call on our government uh, officials, if they have any sense at all, to immediately impeach and arrest this man. The comments that he's making basically is unconstitutional. The comments he's making are going to get us started in a war that we're not going to end properly. At the very least, we're going to get an international spanking and become a post-imperial power. At the worst, we're going to start World War III. Well, yes, and, and, and in the middle, we're going to have the end of the, of the we have a depression, not a recession, because it's not coming back. And the uh, cutting off the oil at the Strait of Hormuz will kill billions due to starvation from the crash of the world economy and destroy America. America will no longer exist. It'll break up. Well, we also had the opportunity mm -hmm. yesterday to watch as certain foreign countries demonstrated statesmanship at the U.N., Right. As opposed to Obama, who looked a little bit like a skinny Nikita Khrushchev banging on the podium, threatening to blow up countries we disagree with. The yeah. opening speech was given by Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff, who just last week told Obama she's canceling her visit to see him because of the spying. Her right. whole speech was, de de was devoted to the idea of the violation of human rights by spying by U.S. agencies. And she went through a defense of the American people from the spies of the National Security Agency. She said the American people are not terrorists, and yet they're being spied on. She said the Brazilian people are not, the, the spying on people in Brazil will yield no evidence of al-Qaeda connection. But the president, or she said the NSA didn't stop there, they bugged her personal emails. And she said that this is intolerable, it's unacceptable, it's immoral, and there should be action taken by the United Nations against such policies. So she actually was defending the American people from our own president and his spy agencies. Right. Now then the president of Iran, Rouhani, gave a very interesting presentation on how diplomacy ought to be based on taking into consideration what others want as well as what you want and that that's the starting point of diplomacy and he you know he did the, iran has been criticized for not saying they want nuclear power and making it look like they're building nuclear weapons he said we don't want nuclear weapons but we do want the option of nuclear energy and he said we have been abiding by the international atomic energy uh, laws we're willing to do that, and that negotiations should take place on that basis. But one country does not have a right to set itself above other countries. And he's absolutely right about that. That's in the U.N. Charter. But Obama right. is saying the United States, under the responsibility to protect, must be the world policeman. And finally, yeah. just for those people who are listeners who will consider themselves serious uh, defenders of Christianity... Putin gave a very stirring defense of Christianity yesterday when he said that, you, that some cultures uh, are more traditional and still adhere to biblical <coughs> prohibitions against sodomy and things like that, and they should right. not be attacked for it. And right. of course, you know, in that sense, Putin is much more defending the traditional mm -hmm. reading of the, the uh, Bible than uh, the President of the United States. Well, apparently he was, it was uh, KGB, but he had a quote, a uh, a spiritual experience, and he's involved very directly with endorsing the Russian Orthodox uh, Church and pushing Christianity and trying to get this country back to conservative roots. And in in Russia, there's a number of people that consider him like a, a superstar. They consider him the second Paul. Literally, this is this not just small minority, but a large uh, minority of people believe that Putin is saving the country from degradation of the West. So. Well, I have more to say on Putin when we come back, because there's some interesting things. Yeah, Putin is a very different character. And our abominator, completely out of his mind, he needs to be in a locked ward in a padded room. Back in a moment. some other comments to make about Mr. Putin. Um, this is really disgusting behavior on the part of Obama at the UN. It's very embarrassing. He's destroying the office of the presidency. He's an idiot. 
He doesn't know how to interact in terms of social policy. He's made a, him a laughing stock among anybody who has two clues in terms of Syrian affair. Uh, he doesn't manage the economy. He says, well, we may have raised the taxes a little bit. Come on, Obama uh, in the Obamacare has come blown up the economy. If this is instituted next year, it isn't derailed. And I'll tell you one thing. If the Republicans don't derail Obamacare, the Republican Party is finished. They're done. They're over. The Democratic Party, because they continue to cling to Obama for the next two years, they're done. They're finished. Uh, That's right. They're finished. They're finished. If they claim to Obama and they don't to start getting rid of this character, so we have. Then we have Bonner, who's trying to play games. The Republican conservatives are basically had it. They want to have some kind of consensus so we can get the economy back on. We want to get Glass Steagall in. We want things that change our foreign policy and attitudes. So we don't always try to figure we push the war button whenever we get frustrated. It's just disgusting behavior. Well, let me let me take a couple points on Putin because. What we're seeing is a leader who's come into a, a country that had been put through the ringer by 70 years of communism. Which was way foisted by the British, a full of British operation, and the killing of the Tsar and Tsarina, and the, and the foisting of communism was a British operation, which was fully stage managed. And of course, the Russians suffering through this have full understanding that even Glasnost and Perestroika, when they crashed the economy 20 some years ago, uh, that crash was actually precipitated by international manipulation of markets and funds to destroy Russia and the Soviet Union, which brought it finally down. Uh, well, it wasn't the, brought down by nuclear weapons, it was brought down by bankers. Well, the only time you had real national unity under the communists is when they were attacked by the Germans in the 40s. Right. Uh, and at that point, you saw the, the effect of the power of Russian nationalism. You know, the people have this uh, the uh, stalin in order to wage the war against the nazis cut a deal with the russian orthodox church and part of this was was uh, memorialized in a movie called alexander nevsky which was about how the russian the, the, the leadership in kiev made a deal with the russian orthodox church against the lithuanian invaders in the 14th century and that was a movie that was made under Stalin's patronage to show that when it comes to attacks, they're Russians first, the idea of a Russian nationalism. Now, that couldn't last in a Cold War period because what, what became Russian nationalism was the other side of the empire. You had two empires facing off in a mutually assured destruction paradigm. But the, the Russian economy under communism couldn't sustain that, and it collapsed. Now, what you just described is what happened after it collapsed. And by the way, we just had the anniversary uh, 15 years ago of the collapse of long-term capital management, which collapsed because during the 90s, when Russia was coming out from under communism, it got something even worse than communism, which was a Western banker's dictatorship, which looted the Russian raw material companies, looted the industry of Russia, and loaded up bonds that were supposed to be funded by the Russian government, which when Yeltsin could no longer sustain the payments, the long-term capital management collapsed. <laughs> there was a hedge right. fund, and it nearly brought the whole Western financial system with it. It was sort of a precursor of what happened a decade later. Now, what's interesting is that Putin came into power over the collapse of Yeltsin, and what Putin represented was the idea that Russia has raw materials, it has people who want to work, it has skilled labor, but it doesn't have a government that's figured out how to use the revenues from the raw materials to build for the future. And so everything Putin has done with, with economists like Sergei Glazyev, who's a collaborator of Lyndon LaRouche in our organization, was to put forward an idea of a national physical economy. And what Putin has wanted more than anything else is to have allies in the West. He's looked to Germany, but the Germans keep shooting themselves in the foot because of the European Union. Now the, the Russians are working with the Chinese. Uh, they were hoping to work with the Japanese, but the Japanese are doing the same thing as the Russians. They're subordinating themselves to this collapsing financial empire. Now the ideal ally for Russia would be the United States, as it was in the 18th century when the Russians supported the Americans against the British in the American Revolution. In the middle of the 19th century, Tsar Alexander 
uh, supported Lincoln and the North, threatening to blockade Britain if British naval vessels were used to blockade New York and San Francisco on behalf of the South. Uh, the Russians have been our allies in the past in wars, and Putin has come to us and said, let's work together to shut down drug trafficking in Afghanistan, drug trafficking. One of the things Putin has done is had the Russian military coordinate with the U.S. military and say, look, we've both been through this Afghan situation. It's horrible. We've got to shut off the flow of drugs, which finances the terrorists. And the American military wants to work with the Russians on this, but the U.S. government, under British direction, says we cannot destroy the drug trafficking because that's the main source of income in Afghanistan. It, it's the liquid capital of the New World Order. And this is providing the weapons that are being used against Russians by the Chechnyans, by the Ossetians, and, and other uh, jihadists who we are implicitly supporting even after they turned around and, and blew off that bomb in Boston. Right, the we marathon bomb, which understand. is the end. Yeah, we, well, we do understand, but we have a leader who's a closet Muslim who's directly allied with the Kenyans that are directly allied with the groups, the Al-Qaeda terrorists, that caused the death of many people in this Kenyan super mall in Nairobi. Uh, this is ridiculous. This president should be immediately impeached. Why is he still in office? But I, I can't, I, I we can't stand clear, two though, more years Dr. of it. I want to be clear on one thing. I don't think Obama's a Muslim because I don't think he believes in God in any way, shape, or form. No, no, but at least he'll, 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 he'll even feign it to manipulate people. Because remember, the globalists are making deals with these Muslim terrorists, not because they like Muslims or terrorists, but because some of their goals are, will be used like a tool. It's almost like dealing with a very da ugly, dangerous tool. And then when the tool is, uses, its loose, uh, uses its usefulness, they'll just get rid of it. So, well, uh, you have to Obama realize that... At the same time Obama gave this raving speech yesterday in New York City, who was in New York to back him up? None other than Tony Blair. Blair is in for a series of meetings. Blair was on the Morning Joe show where he said that uh, the United States should have bombed Syria. Uh, I mean, Blair should have been arrested when he came to the United States. He's the one responsible directly for the deaths of Americans in Iraq. Like right. By forcing this phony intelligence that convinced Bush that we had to go into Iraq. Now, exactly. Blair, was, Blair, is, Blair is a war criminal. He's a war criminal. He, he's also directly involved in a, with a group of British intelligence uh, and Israelis in concocting the story of, of Assad's use of chemical weapons to launch another war to get more Americans killed. And Tony Blair, furthermore, in his speech last night in New York City, said that he doesn't believe that this is a serious pause in global warming, that the scientists will soon see that he's right, that it's all 95% man-made. Absolutely disgusting. Evil behavior. And Blair That's should Obama's have been arrested. Mentor. Wonderful. No wonder we're in trouble. Two more years of this? I don't know. to the uh, Nutra Medical Report, and uh, Harley, uh, there's a lot of other burning issues going on. What about uh, the issue of the uh, government shutdown and Obamacare? What do you think of that? Let me, let me say one more thing going back to this question of, of Syria and the, the collaboration of Republican leadership to protect Obama, because this will take us directly into the impotent opposition to Obama on the budget question. Right. Uh, there are 175 Republican congressmen who have signed on to a resolution by Republican Congressman uh, Wolf from Virginia, Frank Wolf. It's House Resolution 36, which would call for a, a special select committee to investigate the Benghazi attacks. Now, Wolf said this is necessary because the two standing committees, that is, the two already existing committees in the House, they would have oversight of this, have refused to do so. One is headed by Daryl Issa, who is limiting the Benghazi investigation to material that incriminates Hillary Clinton. Which I don't know why he's doing that, because that, uh, to me, uh, he looks to me like he's being politically manipulated. 
Well, one person told me he's being blackmailed. I just think that he's he's uh, very ambitious and wants to protect his large fortune. And you know, as a result, he's limiting it to investigation that, look, we already know Hillary Clinton was incompetent in Benghazi, and she's covering up for Obama. What else is there to investigate? What about who put the Gaddafi's, uh, or who put the... Uh, Islamists in power in Libya. Well, what yeah, about uh, providing the weapons from Libya uh, to the uh, Syrian uh, jihadists? And what about also these uh, these apparently these uh, surface-to-air missiles that they provided that they were tw trying to get back, which is why they accepted it without any security force around Stevens, trying to get him out there literally on a very dangerous date, which is totally illogical. It's like uh, this doesn't even make sense. Well, so that's, Daryl Issa is disrupting a real investigation. And even worse, the House Intelligence Committee under Mike Rogers, who's a former FBI agent, Rogers said, we're not going to investigate Benghazi. I have not seen a shred of evidence that weapons have gone from Libya to Syria. What? I mean, even, even You've got to be Obama, kidding. Even, even Obama Obama's, admits to it. Yeah. Right. They say some of it may have leaked through. Well, Oh, come on. Well, Rogers, but what I'm saying is the two House chairmen are covering up for Obama. And so we have a potential with the Wolf resolution for a special select committee to have a real investigation, which would take up the role of the Saudis. And by the way, these events in Kenya, again, point to the Saudis because of their role in financing the Al-Shabaab terror forces. Right. So we could unravel the whole terror network, and what we'll find is it leads back to the Queen of England, to Tony Blair, and to John Brennan, who is Obama's CIA director. Right. Now, the reason I bring up the, the sabotage of an honest investigation by Republicans is that the Republicans are doing the same damn thing on this budget ceiling debate. Look, the basic point is that if the government's going to continue to operate, they need more funds, and even the Republicans admit that. You're not going to stop a budget deficit by fighting over the debt ceiling. You're going to stop a budget deficit by ending the bailouts, by ending the fraud of the post-2008 stimulus and TARP and these kinds of things, and by actually putting credit through the financial system into physical production. Now, Republicans should know that. Instead, they're in a grandstanding fight with Obama, who's perfectly happy for this fight, because if you have a choice of shutting down the government or keeping it open, the American people will probably side with Obama or blame the Republicans. Right. Why go into this as a suicide mission? Why not say, all right, here, we're going to go ahead and vote to raise the debt ceiling, and then we're going to vote to get Glass-Steagall in, and then we're going to vote to put Americans back to work. And if yeah. you don't support us on this, then you're the criminal. Well, the other thing they could do very simply is when we vote, we're also going to vote to, to, to delay or to suspend the personal mandate because they did it for many corporations. This personal mandate is going to kill business. And what happens is the small businesses are being killed because they can't employ employer, have employees where they're forced to buy insurance at exorbitant rates. It's killing business. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you a personal example of that. My company here in Houston, the, the company that's the LaRouche operation here in Texas, we have about 16 paid uh, people, and our insurance is with a major carrier, and it's gone up every year, uh, $100 or so per person. Under Obamacare, for us to keep the same policy we've had for the last five years, will end up costing $1,100 a month per person. Wow. Now, that's that's that, per person, not a family. That's just per person. That's per person. If I wanted to add my wife, it's two thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Now, if we go into the exchange, then we're going to end up probably with a cheaper policy, but tax complications for the company, tax complications for the employee, a higher deductible, and fewer uh, or less access to regular care. So we'll get a, a free physical every year and a free colonoscopy every 10 years. That's what Obamacare is offering to people who are in middle wage and lower companies. 
Now, the that's not true. Pay- that's, that's not health care. That's, that's a pseudo health care. It doesn't even provide an, uh, what we call naturopathic or functional medicine. No, it's an insurance or, bailout is what it is. Yeah. It's a bailout it's of the insurance companies. Bailout of insurance companies and drug companies, at least temporarily. And then, of course, they'll implode in the next few years, and all you have is a single-payer mandate run by a government, which will be extremely mediocre uh, so-called pseudo-medicine, not real health care. And it'll all be all you have because it won't, the insurance companies will be gone. Well, I would not weep over the loss of insurance companies, but what I would weep over is the loss of doctors and hospitals, which is what's happening under right. Obamacare. Now, the, the question keeps coming up. People keep saying, well, what does Obama have to gain from this? I mean, Obama is already a millionaire. Uh, what he gains is the, the self-knowledge that he is the great, controller of the world. I mean, he's, he's an egotist. He doesn't care about the, the effects of his policies on people. But there are people who are drafting these policies who do know how evil they are, who actually are evil for their own sake, not for their own uh, uh, ego, but because they delight in doing evil. And that's, yeah. that's what the Malthusians and the genocidalists yeah. believe in. They've got to cull the herd, reduce the human race. Uh, this is what the, the planetary climate control body is trying to do. They blame the human race for the temperature going up or down, as though it hasn't been doing that for millions of years. Right. Long before we had a factory or a car on this planet, even before there was man on the planet, the temperature would go up and down based on solar and galactic uh, forces. Right. And yet they're trying to impose on us a regime which would force us to cut the ability to produce, including to produce food, for the sake of what? For the sake of their theories which have been proven to be wrong. And Obama is saying that he's going to use the rest of his time in office to force through an accounting for uh, this uh, planetary uh, global warming. Well, global warming has already stopped. It stopped because of the solar system. It stopped because of the sun. Uh, it, the, the problem is that these guys really intend to kill people in the name of protecting the planet. Yeah, it really is very bizarre. And, and by the way, it's not even supported by science. That's the bizarre thing about it. No, the real scientists are the ones, in fact, there were people who were part of the original group that said the temperature is going up, who are now saying, well, look, the temperature is not going up, so there was something wrong with our models. That's a real scientist who might make a mistake, but is not ideologically driven. Right. The ones who are ideologically driven are phony scientists who are using their degrees and their peer review to destroy the real scientists. Amazing. Back in a moment with Harley Schlanger and the LaRouche Foundation. The website is LaRouchePAC.com, EIR Executive Intelligence Review, LaRouchePUB.com. The number to call, 800-922-2907 to get more info. Welcome back. And uh, Harley, we have a number of thorny issues that are coming up, but uh, our biggest issue is we need to get glass steagall We need to get the country back on track. Uh, we have a few months left before Christmas sales, but many businesses hang in the balance based on those sales year wide. Yeah, you know, every year we have a uh, a healthcare bomb that's about to happen. In if the Obamacare is not derailed and we have something that allows people to have affordable health insurance, it really is health insurance, not a false substitute. Uh, we need to not be always ready to start another war at the best of the bankers. We've got so many issues here. The main thing we, I'm surprised at is with all the violations that Obama's done that uh, the process of impeachment hasn't started on him. Um, the Republicans really are going to destroy their own party if they don't smarten up. Well, both parties are going through self-destruction. To the extent the Democrats think that they have to defend Obama, they're forced supporting policies which are hurting their own constituents. Yeah, exactly. And, to the, and, and there's a, I was out in Los Angeles two weeks ago for the AFL-CIO convention, and they had a whole day debate on Obamacare, and they went through, I think the, the, there were actually 12 official complaints they had about it, but there were more than 20 things raised from the floor. And it's clear there was, that everyone knew it was a bad program, 
in the end, they came out saying, we support the president for trying to do something to improve the health care, and we submit to him the following proposals to improve it. Now, they knew full well that he wasn't going to listen to a single one of their proposals. And every rank-and-file member of the AFL-CIO we talked to was angry at Obama. Now, same thing with the Black Caucus. We were at the Keisha Rogers was at the Congressional Black Caucus meeting last week in Washington. And when Eric Holder spoke, as soon as he was there, he spoke five minutes and then left. And as soon as he left, everyone said, why won't he stick around and talk to us? We want to ask him why he's protecting the bankers. Uh, there was total anger about Detroit, the fact that the city is being looted and the the derivative you, dealers get paid, but the pensions don't. It won't be just Detroit. If Detroit goes down, which is my home city, if Detroit goes down, 19 other districts much bigger than Detroit in terms of economy and number of people involved will go under. We're going to see America break up. It's like, uh, remember that show, that came, a movie that came out a couple of years ago? Uh, that talked about the future of America, and it had like six districts. Russian yep. geopoliticians have talked about this. Uh, they call it the Hunger Games. Well, we could have Hunger Games America or post-America because Obama is destroying the Constitution, the country, our foreign policy, and our status in the world. And when you make statements at the UN like that, who can believe this man? He literally well, bold-faced lies like, like a cocaine addict coming down off of a hard run and lies to everybody like you know i'm just i want to get my next hit I, I i'll tell you this lie but i need my next hit and i'm just going to move on and i'm the emperor and i want to start war and don't ask me for details it doesn't matter about details about who's guilty we just have to do this well here's the real this. point on this that labor is deserting obama the african-american community is deserting him the young Good. people are rebelling against him because they don't like the idea that all of their social media is being yeah. run through NSA computers. 18 the points seniors, dropped. Uh, as soon as they found it out within one week, 18 yeah. points dropped in popularity with young people because they say, hey, he's on my Facebook and Twitter account. He's tracking me. And what? The, seniors, the seniors who tended to be the largest voters against Obama are even more outraged around the whole question of uh, his threats to Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. So... We're seeing the Democratic Party constituents turn their back on Obama. Now, what about the, the Congress? Well, Pelosi, uh, people like uh, Senator Levin, who's retiring in Michigan, Dick Durbin from Illinois, they're clinging to him. And if they cling, it's, it's like clinging to the Titanic as it goes down. Now, what's the yeah. excuse for the Republicans? Some of them are saying, let Obama destroy the country and then we'll waltz in. So for opportunism... Not because they have a good program, but for opportunistic reasons, they're letting it collapse. There yeah. are others who are tied to the same Wall Street networks as the Obama Democrats, and therefore they're not going to go against the banks. Now, what I would say exists in the Congress is a section, a minority section of each party, Democrats and Republicans. Some of them are Tea Party Republicans, some of them are Progressive Democrats, Libertarian Democrats and Republicans, who are opposed to this presidency for the right reasons, but they don't have a positive alternative. And so what LaRouche has done is to take his time and efforts to develop through our policy committee, through our basement team, through our allies around the country and internationally, an alternative program so that we could confidently say, if we pull the plug on Wall Street, pull the plug on derivatives, pull the plug on all the, the crazy corruption of the last 40 years. We have a much better program that will benefit all Americans. Now, this is not a Republican or a Democratic Party policy. It's an American policy based on the Constitution. And we've got to win this fight quickly because the possibility of a blowout could occur as early as the end of this month because now with the German elections over, the question is, will Germany provide a trillion euros to bail out Southern Europe? And the German election didn't make a clear, there was no clear alternative. So the European Central Bank Director Draghi is saying he's going to do double the quantitative easing of Bernanke. And this scares the Germans because of hyperinflation. If they go along with it, Europe might limp through the, the, the fall. If they don't, you could have a blowout in Europe, which would immediately affect the major banks in this country. Now, one thing to keep an eye on, J.P. Morgan Chase is about to get hit with a huge fine 
for their California foreclosure and mortgage practices. They're trying to say this is Bear Stearns, which they were forced to take over. This is uh, uh, the policies that were there before J.P. Morgan. But J.P. Morgan kept selling those faulty mortgage packages they took over from Bear Stearns. And from, what did they take over? Was it WAMU? Yeah, Washington Mutual. They kept making profits from buying and selling those faulty mortgage packages. So how can they say it's not their fault? Now, there's talk that they're being hit with a charge of $20 billion. Now, just last week, they had to pay over a billion in fines for the London Whale case and for defrauding their credit card accounts. But... $20 $20 billion would be very big. That could collapse the bank. So we could see a situation within a couple of weeks where the banking system is gone. Now, that's the urgency behind getting Glass-Steagall through right now. Yeah, in other words, you're literally saying that the timeline is the banks who go boom, and we could uh, have a financial blowout like the, worse than 1929 crash because you don't just get the solution of the small little mini banks. You're talking about the big banks gone as well. The so-called systemically important financial institutions, they could right. all go. And it, as, as Thomas Honig, the former Kansas City Federal Reserve chief and now deputy chairman of the uh, FDIC, he said, we're not just going to have one of them go. If one of them goes, they're all going to go. And so we are we could be days or weeks away from that happening. As I said, because of the German situation in Europe, and also because it may be that the the uh, Justice Department will hold back from a big fine on J.P. Morgan Chase, because as Eric Holder said, the system's so fragile that if we attack one bank that way, it could collapse the system. But even if they postpone it through the fall, you're not going to make it beyond this the end of this year. And so we're on the verge of that. Obama's not going to solve it. The debt ceiling fight is not going to solve it. We need Glass-Steagall and nuclear Nawapa and a credit system. That could put us back into the profit uh, profitability because by producing more and creating more jobs that are productive, you increase the total value of the production of the economy. It also proves that America is still the engine of the world economy. And that's why the Chinese economy is imploding now. They're, not, they're stopping orders. They've been stuffing things in their warehouses, even finished goods. They're building warehouses at an enormous rate to stick goods. They can't even ship to us to, to sell. But they're starting so going to on? develop. The, the, their future <clears throat> depends on their development of an internal market, which is still not clear they can do it. That's going to take decades. I read you this headline earlier. Walmart cutting yeah. orders as unsold merchandise piles. Exactly. Up. Yeah. That, that's that'll take US 20 to 30 economy. years minimum before they build enough population with enough income. That's why they've abandoned cities. You know, uh, million plus people cities all over the uh, internal part of the country, several hundred miles inland that have no inhabitants. No one can afford to live there. No, the system as a whole is going, and we we are the ones who can turn it around in the United States. So call yeah. us, 800-922-2907. If you want to get involved in this, give us a call, 800-922-2907. Yeah, the, the fall is now the time to do this. If uh, we don't stop this, we're going to be going to war. We're going to see a crash in the economy. And we're going to see much worse. And, of course, if there's environmental disasters that occur like Fukushima gets worse, we're detecting radiation levels higher than they've ever been before from Fukushima, and no one's doing a thing about it. You don't hear any statements in the U.N. or from Obama or anybody. Back in a moment. Thank you, Harley. Amazing. We'll uh, talk to you again next week. Anything breakthrough news, give me a shout, and we'll have you back on for a quick cameo.